and we're going to start it now. Hey, Orange One here. So we're going to be starting off this episode of Bannerlord um, th with something a little different. I actually have pre-recorded this, so I'm adding in this commentary after the effect. Um, I saw that there's this tournament here, and I wanted to keep on doing it until actually I won it. And I believe in this attempt, I got it. So, enjoy. <laughs> it took me quite a while. I was just kind of playing around with it um, in between recording. And um, I I got it one time. And I was like, okay, well, I've got to include this in an episode, you know? So here you go. This is, this is what I got to show you from the Kuze, um tournament, which works very, very similar to the other tournaments from the old game. I don't know if they intend on changing that at all. I mean, it works just fine. It's serviceable. But it would be cool to see this incorporated more with the multiplayer aspect of the game. But yeah, basically the weapons and armor of these tournaments are determined by the faction that whose city you're in. So like we're in a Kuze city right now. So everyone's gonna be um, on horses and shooting arrows with some spears. Um, yeah, exactly. So we, yeah, I'm not too good with the spear if I'm completely honest. The for me, a horse archery tends to be where I'm good at. So for this, I'm gonna just kite you into each other essentially, and see if I can land some hits on y'all. Yeah, kite them into each other essentially. You slow it down, see if I can stab you while you're slowing. There we go. That's a good hit. See if we can get that person. There we go. So now we've got only footmen. Now it's just, uh, I think that's our companion. Yeah, that's totally our companion. She's like yelling die at her, her master. Oh. <laughs> Watch what you, what you say to your boss there, Mrs. She is doing a good amount of damage, but not enough. There we go. Looking good. Definitely looking good. Yeah, I, I enjoy the tournaments, but um, I wanted to keep this game as like an Iron Man mode style game. As you've probably realized by now that I kind of enjoy the struggle. Therefore, I'm not going to reload when we don't do well. But this one I, I figured I could reload and do a little bit just because the tournaments are so fun and I've, I enjoyed doing this so much as a kid I figured I'd do it on here and like kind of asides from this episode we'll do it like kind of like Iron Man. Um like asides from this right here. <laughs> I, it's totally breaking the roleplay but Rodan I don't know he, he was um, inspired by the ambassador over here. Maybe his father owned a similar sword, and he thinks it might be his father's sword. Yes, yes, that saves the roleplay. Rodan's doing this for his family's honor, and to claim back the sword. He'll eat us, apparently. <laughs> Not doing a great job at it. Yeah, the AI doesn't seem to know how to counter if you're just kind of a little bit off to the side of their horse like that. They're trying to turn it to get a better angle. A little cheesy. But look, I think we just got our clan tier one. I didn't realize that at the time, but now we're officially a clan, which means our party size is bigger. Um, and there's all kinds of cool things that go with that. Though, we don't really have enough numbers to attack this group, um, unfortunately. It is what it is. I think we're gonna have to leave that caravan behind. I, I just don't think the little money that we would get from this would not account for the amount of people that we would lose if we were to even win that, that battle. And seeing how our units are so terrible, we're not going to mess with it. Yeah, let's go ahead and we'll get the ambassador. That will be our sword for now. Might be the best sword that we can get for a long time. I don't know. And then, yeah, I think here I spent some money on upgrading our our party because I remember I've forgotten who it was exactly. I think it was Thugonomics or whatever. Something like that. Someone was saying um that I should get some companions and start leveling them up. And I agree from 
Uh, I remember that from um, from Warband being incredibly important to having a good uh, mid to late game. So the sooner we can get on that, the better. Hence, we'll, we've got uh, Gen, we'll give a proper bow and some arrows too because they actually have skills in it. I don't know if I showed that off just there, but um, she's actually got some skill in a, a archery. So I was trying to figure out how to uh, get or what exactly I wanted to do with these arrows. And I tried to equip it and then I couldn't see it and it was like not showing up on my character. It's a little, a little confusing. And then look, it's like not with Jin either. Oh, it's in our primary weapon slot, which is weird because it. You would think it would put it would replace your uh, current arrows, but I think I'd probably try it again, don't I? Yeah, you can see. Yep, the arrows come back there. It's bizarro. But I think you can just buy them like that, and then you can. I think I could have just dragged them over in the first place and it would have worked and it would have been fine. But now I'm owing 5,000. Oh, yeah, I think we're buying like the whole stack of them. Let's just buy one. That bow does look tempting, that Nordic sh short bow. And we are getting... Have we not? I thought we already bought the bow for her. Now I'm confusing myself, I can't remember. I basically wanted to turn my two companions into um, horse archers. Because we need a little horse archer regiment. They'll really help us having some cavalry that can harass and shoot around the, uh, the shields of the shield wall as they come towards our shield wall. It's just, you know, classic uh, tactics of the warband era. I'm like already thinking about all that stuff. Um, and I think we were just giving you just arrows, and yeah, you've got just arrows. Or no, I gave you ranged arrows. Okay. Oh yeah, it was doing the weird thing. There, that's better. We've got our ranged arrows, and with our better archer, and our not as good archer, you'll get you'll get the hand me downs. The scraps. We also need a shield for you. I think I bought a, a shield for Para. We'll keep the sheep. Yeah, I heard someone saying that it's not really worth it to butcher the animals. You typically want to keep the uh, animals alive and buy and sell them alive. But I mean, if they're worth like nothing and you can't get anything for them, might as well, right? And yeah, I think that I was just kind of doing this at night, so I was just kind of seeing what would work and and all that stuff, just playing around, you know. And yeah, there was this gang fight that the old Chugun wants us to help out with, so I figured, hey, yeah, we'll we'll do some of these quests because there's quite a few quests actually up here in the bulk hand, bulk to hand, bulk to hand. I'll talk hand. That army of poachers, that sounds tempting, but these guys, they can't sell their products here. And we're trying to be a merchant, so we should probably be doing merchant quests, right? Man, I don't know about you guys, but my work has been so weird with this whole coronavirus thing. Like, I, as a teacher, I don't know if I've talked about this in this series so far, but it's so weird how they're trying to go all digital and everyone's losing their minds. The crazy thing is the concern of like kids who don't have access to internet and they're trying to get that to them. They're even going so far as to giving them devices and strategically placing like buses with Wi-Fi on them. Isn't that crazy? Like I've heard of that before, but I didn't think Port like Portland was gonna be doing stuff like that anytime soon. But they are. Um but there's some serious valid concerns that even once they've done that, students without home support they're not gonna be learning you know so it's like yeah i can do stuff online but the accountability piece is very concerning <laughs> let's just say that so it's been very much like okay do your job but 
It doesn't really matter if you don't. <laughs> I know one said that, but you get the impression. Also, with how they're spent, how people are spending their time, um, and resources, you can see that there's some subject areas that are getting more than others, which is you know interesting in of itself as well. And it's to be expected, to be honest, right? You gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta pay the bills. I mean, that's what we're doing in this game. Gotta pay the bills. And I figured, you know, might be time that we get a decent fighting force. I and mean, we are a merchant. But we did just um, honor our family and win back our sword. The family sword. And here I really wanted these items for these people. So I figured, sure, we'll we'll sell off some of the stuff. Some of the hardwood. I think I did a little bit of trading. I might have done some trading soon because we were running really low on the finances. I mean, here we almost had the number to attack those guys, but oh yeah. I, sorry for the weird cut there. I think, um, I, like I said, I was doing this like late at night, so I was like having to go help out with like other things as well. Um, and yeah, I decided, and I was really looking at that, like, trying to figure out, do I want to go for it or not? And I was like, yeah, sorry, Otter, I'm not going to go for it. Those numbers, I don't like having numbers like that, especially against Steph Bandits. I remember those guys from uh, Warband. They can, they can overwhelm you if you're not careful. And we've got such terrible units. Our companions, we literally have, like, fresh recruits with armor on. Like, we're not... We're not set up to take out a group like that. Not without more horses ourselves. I think we've got zero horsemen. I think it's me and my companions. That's... <laughs> no. Not gonna happen. Not a balanced uh, fighting force, as they say. Oh yeah, I remember this. We're kind of tight here, huh? This guy was asking for us to actually take out some step bandits, which is interesting, because that's just the took out that group that was of traders that was just out there. So it looks like it's a pretty common problem around here, and this is a an alteration of a quest from Warband. I think they've done a much better job with this, like to find the people that have been robbing uh, the streets. Um, in Warband, that was like my least favorite quest because you could never find them. Here, we started off and there was already groups like that we could see that would work. And I don't know about the exact spawning mechanics behind it all. Oh look, all the grain is super valuable, so I'm selling that here. Getting a little bit of cash and then we'll use that to... I think we use that to buy some other goods. Yeah. Oh, were we looking at selling the horses? I think we were. We were looking at selling some horses here. And I've heard that step horses are incredibly valuable, so that is something I probably want to invest in down the road, is getting horses from here and the desert and then bringing them up north and trading those. We could just be like a horse merchant, like honestly, with the different breeds. I think you could bring them across the map, and because they're locally specialties, you could have, like, some serious cash that you get from that. It'd be dope. Oh yeah, I was trying to find out what these guys all produced to see what we could maybe buy. Um, like, the expensive stuff that you, like, find, like, the silver ore and stuff like that, but no luck, huh? But look like that that group right there, perfect. They're even walking straight towards us. Which I think is in part due to it being night. Again, sorry about it being night. I know it's a little bit hard for y'all to see on, on uh, phones when it gets dark like that. But this is going to be a dark fight. You know, I don't really know what to do about the lighting. Stay close. Because it, it's going to totally mess up the daytime lighting if we mess with it right now. So, sorry. You're going to have to... Forward! Maybe change the some of the settings on your device if you can't see just for a little bit. I mean, I don't think this isn't a super long combat. Yeah, I was just telling my infantry to get infantry! closer together because that cav. If we can stop them in their tracks. 
that would be fantastic. Man, we're just hitting nothing. Three arrows. Just nothing but net. Or not nothing but net. That's when you hit. We are ooh, okay, we are getting some hits now. Oh. These dudes are coming in real slow for some reason. I mean I'll take it. Helps us not have this be as much chaos. He's just weakening all of them. Not actually getting any kills. See what I mean? Step bandits. They're not They're not the absolute worst, but if there's a whole lot of them, you could imagine how crazy and overwhelming that can be. Like they can just totally overwhelm you. And then like this dude right here, he's got an actual bow. And they can just whittle you down. It's so annoying. Oh my god. If you're just stuck as infantry with one of these guys just firing on you. There's not really an awful lot you can do besides hide and hope that they run out of arrows. But look, now they're charging in. I think now they might have ran out of arrows, so now we, we should be good, yeah. He actually almost got me. He could have gotten me there. I think he was going for me. Come on, infantry. There we go. That was kind of a dangerous shot I just took there. Could have hit one of my own guys, but... Gotta do it for the XP, right? It was fine. It was an open shot. They were safe. Oh, safe. But yeah, I think this episode is gonna be a little bit shorter than this because... I thought I had about half an hour of footage, but actually there was some of the old footage of me doing the uh, tournament. And I got rid of that. It was like 8 or 10 minutes or so of that. And so this is going to be a little bit more than a 20 minute episode. Um, let me know if you like me doing this format. I could try and do more of it in the future. Because um, I do have some gaming time. I just like kind of don't have much recording time. Kind of hard being loud for that long and expecting others to be not so loud, right? So yeah. Um, we're just gonna do our thing. We're gonna be a trader up here. We're gonna try and make a little bit of money. The uh, what we can do to get our companions leveled up. Maybe get a workshop or a caravan, and we'll be set. Here, oh yeah, I think I was comparing the step and the desert horse trying to see which one's really faster it looks like the they're very very similar horses actually um the step horse i forgot i think the desert horse is a little bit faster but the step horse might be more maneuverable or something like that in any case these are a decent price so we'll buy those step horses from them there, and we'll see where we can sell them. You can kind of see their value and, and all the requirements. Yeah, I think if we're looking here, the speed is 46 compared to 54. So it's much faster, but 56 compared to 69, much more maneuverable. So a step horse can turn much faster, but a desert horse is more like a bullet. They can get going faster. Okay, so you can... That, you know, whenever I'm thinking about that, I think of, like, sharks versus, like, goldfish and the lengths of their body. And, like, predators tend to go really fast in one direction. And predators tend to be able to turn really quickly in the, in the ocean. It's just kind of this one trend. Um, and the predator, like, essentially spears through a group. So they don't need to be able to turn very quickly, essentially. And they'll get some food. But the, the yeah. Long story short... Uh, the I like the desert horse because it makes me feel like I'm a predator, you know. Top of the food chain kind of thing. And honestly, I would rather be fast and be able to get away from someone. Um, especially at this point in the game, being more maneuverable it would be good actually when there's like a huge groups of combat. But I don't know. I don't know how it actually affects your um. Whatchamacallit. I just spaced on it, sorry. Oh, look at this hardwood. Such a good deal. See, this is what I mean. Like, if you buy in bulk, you can get these things for so cheap. 
like so cheap and then sell them for like twice their value so you can load up on tons of volume and then end up making a good amount of cash in one trip so i think i've been coming around to the way of bulk trading i tried to do like specialty items like the silver and all that and it, it works but it also doesn't work great and um apparently we're losing morale even though we gained dinars i don't know why we lost mor morale there that was kind of weird i think there's some bugs going on with that system then in any case, look at this. We got all this hardwood that we just bought, and I think we were buying it for 11. We just sold them for about 20 or something like that. And look, we've got like 2K. We were like pretty much out of money. Now we've got like 2K. You know, if we do that a few times, we have some income from our, uh, our caravan. Hopefully they have some better trades in the upcoming days. We're going to be rolling in it. We're going to be absolutely rolling in it. It'll be a good place to start off on the next episode from, right? I might do some board games in the next episode. I'm not sure. Because I've been thinking about doing a tutorial about it. I mean, I did a tutorial about board games in general. But I'm thinking about doing one for individual board games as well. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, there's like some step bandits around here. I, I think we were just trying to get that quest done, maybe. Yeah, we were just hoping to get that quest done. But I don't think that they're close enough to, to for it to count. I don't see the quest marker on them. And they're pretty darn fast is the problem. A little too fast for us. Again, we lost some morale there. Okay, and the rival gang. We're getting called in for the rival gang. Oh yeah, so I think I want to go start the next episode doing that. Okay, well we're getting to the end of what I recorded for the voiceover piece. So thank you for joining me. This has been Orange One.